Hello guys, welcome to my course, Rx Java Hands-On Course. My name is Leonardo Silva, and today we are going to start our second class. Uh, so today we are going to cover uh, the basic understanding of events. So what are events in the Rx Java context? Uh, what are what is an observable? What is a flowable? And what's the difference between a hot and a, or a cold observable or a meter? So this will give us a background to understand the base of even emitters, at least two of them. Then next class, we're going to see the other two different uh, event emitters that we have in our Java 2. So first of all, what is an event in our Java world? So an event uh, is an event. <laughs> so an event can wrap values. So that's it. Like the event itself, you don't handle, you don't handle anything. You don't handle, you don't handle an event itself in our Java. You handle something that the event wraps. So in that case, you can handle uh, a value that is even is wrapping, or you can handle a, an exception, for example. So in that case, uh, even scenario Java can wrap uh, an, a value or an exception. And an emitter, that is the, the object that emits or produces these events, can either produce like one, zero, a lot of events and complete, or fail. It's impossible for an emitter to fail and, and after complete. So it's like, let's imagine that you have an emitter that's going to emit uh, 100 events, right? And then if for some reason in the, in the, in the middle of this, uh, of this emitter is, is, is producing the events, it gets an error and fail. So then this will emit an, an event that wraps uh, an error. After that, your emitter is not going anymore. It's not going to work anymore because this is kind of uh, kind of stopped to work. So let's let's think like this. So this means that every time an emitter emits an error, it stopped to work, right? So that's that's the idea. So that's why uh, an emitter can either complete or fail after emitting events or not emitting any event. We are going to see this in, in, in code. So um, talking about the two basic, one of the two basic uh, emitters, type of em emitters that we have in Arc Shower, the first one is observable. Uh, so what exactly is an observable? So observable is an kind of diff a type of emitter that can emit zero, one, or multiple events. So observable is already existent in Rx Java version one, and observable is pretty much flexible and generalist in the sense that you can use observable for everything. So, for example, uh, in the beginning of Rx Java one, we had only observable. So every time you have, even though you have one emitter that was emitting only one event, you always had to use observable for that. Later in, in Arc Java 1, uh, they created a, a single. That's another kind of event that we're going to talk next, next class. But for you to understand, observable is something that you can use for everything. I'm not saying that you should. You, you are going to see like uh, more a specific type of emitters uh, in the next class. But observable is the most generalist one. So you can use this for everything. And then we have the flowable. Flowable is pretty much similar to observable version. The, so just explaining that Flowbo comes in Arc Java 2, so you don't have this in Arc Java 1. So Flowbo can emit zero, one, or multiple events as well. But Flowbo it has like a more specific usage. Flowbo is really good when you when you have infinite streams. So if you have like a, a place like an integration with some messaging queue or something like that, where you have infinite streams in the sense that you you never know when some event is going to be to be produced. And then uh, you can use Flowbo. That's pretty cool because Flowbo offer uh, built-in support for back pressure. It's something that we, we are going to talk later, later in the course. But if you're curious, you can Google about it. And you're going to see a lot of uh, documentation about it. What is a back pressure? Um, so that's the basic difference between observable and Flowbo. So just think, in the first, first time, just think that Flowbo, it's really good. Just think about Flowbo when you start to think about infinite streams then you probably go for flowable instead of observable. Okay, and last but not least, uh, what is a hot or a cold observable? So we are going to see the code in a second. So in theory, 
just for you to have an idea, a code observable is an emitter that produces events when someone subscribed to it, only when someone subscribed to it. So this is the default uh, type of emitter. So uh, you people usually say hot or cold observable, basically because of RX Java 1. But you can also see hot emitter, cold emitter, but that's not so common. So you probably hear about uh, hot observable, cold observable, but it's the same thing. So a cold observable or a cold emitter is an emitter that just produces events when someone calls the subscribe method. So when someone subscribes to it. And a hot emitter produces events regardless there is one or not consumed, there's one or no non-consumer subscriber to it. So that's based, the basic difference between them. And then let's see some code, right? Let's see some code to understand the, the difference between them. <coughs> okay, so let's start with observable then. Here, what I, what I did, I'm using, so just pay attention on the import that I'm using here. So I basically call observable.range and I am uh, creating a range. So a range means that I'm going to produce events starting from 10 and I'm going to produce 10 events. So a count of 10 events. Then after that, I call the method subscribe. And then for all the, for every event, I'm going to call this callback. That's the callback on next. So on every event, I'm going to call this callback and going to print this in my console. So let's see that. So you see, starting from 10, I print 10 events. So what happens then if I remove the subscribe? You see that there's nothing. Why? Because if no, as I said, this is the default behavior of, of, of emitters. Emitters uh, by default in Arc Java 1 and 2, they are cold. This means that if no one subscribed to it, this is not just this is not running let's let's say it's not really uh, executing anything right so when i do that now it runs again perfect uh, so what wh how can i okay but let's think about the hot hot observer now because let's say okay for some reason you don't want to have uh you don't want to start to to produce events only when someone subscribe you you, you want to start uh, to, to produce events right away. Like I just wrote this code, I want this code to execute and start to produce events. So what do I do then? So I have a method called publish. This I have on observable on all events. So here in flow as well. So as soon as I call publish, what, what do I have here? Is that I have, uh, I receive a connector observable. So let's end here. So what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I, I have an observable that's going to meet 10 events. I'm going to, to call the method do on next. Do on next will basically execute this callback on every on each uh, event that's going to that's 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 being produced. So I'm going to say just uh, system out in the LAN. So I'm going to print this, and then I'm going to publish. So this publish means that I have this, this actable. Now, if I run, you see that this is not really working yet. Why? Because I need to connect. So I need to make this work. So I need to come and say connect. Then this is going to start. Oops, not with this. And now you see that this is printing, even though I don't have any consumer for it. So when hot observable is, is usable, like, okay, yeah, when both are usable. So usually we use code observables. So when you have like a service that returns a single or a observable or a flowable or of something, you basically use uh, code because you just want to call this method. Like, for example, let's imagine you have like a user service that you have a method called get user. This will return, for example, an observable of user. You know that this is going to return only one user or no user, but we are going to see the other type of emitters in next class. So let's think about an observable. So this will return an observable of user. This means that uh, this observable will emit an event with an user or no user, right? 
So then you just want to call to trigger this call of get user when someone subscribed to it. So this is the base, this is the, this is the code observable, that's fine. But let's imagine that you have, for example, uh, you start, you, you're using, for example, something like Kafka, and you want to create a subscriber to Kafka that every time you receive an event from Kafka, uh, from some topic, you want to publish this inside your application, for example. So that's that's how you can do using a, a hot observable. You basically create an observable or a flowable that's going to connect to Kafka, and then you connect to it. And then on do next, you do whatever you want to do. So for example, you want to call a service that's going to update something, whatever. So this is more uh, uh, more is a, a better scenario for hot observable. But this is only for you to understand. And this works the same way for observable and for flowable, for example. So flowable, we have the same, as I said, like the only difference is that in flowable, you can apply back pressure, but that's something that we're not going to cover now, but it works pretty much the same way. So if you want to apply the same code for that, we can do, or we can just come here, for example, and change this to flowable probably going to be connectable global. then we have the same result and that's it right so uh, just recap so a hot observable is an observable that start to emit event right away as soon as you start you call connect and this start to to subscribe to it and then you have to, you have to do the on next for example to kind of uh, interact with the events that you are receiving, for example. Or you can also map, as you wish. You can come and say, okay, I want to map this to n, so this will be an event, and plus 10, you can do the same. Right? And because the, here you, you still have the observable, that is still a code observable. So code observable, you do another map, code observable, this is still code observable. This just become a hot observable when you do a publish. Then this transforms in a connectable. And as soon as the connectable is a hot observable, you, then you just need to connect to it. When you connect to it, this starts to produce. And so this is the concept of code observable and hot observable. And the basic idea of observable and flowable, that are the two uh, type of em event emitters that we have on our Java 2. So guys, I hope you like it, this class. If you have questions, please uh, message me in the YouTube and I will try to help you with everything. So I hope you like it and see you in next class. Bye-bye.